Alright, let's discuss the DART mission once again. In essence, one of the most important space missions of our time that basically only had one purpose. Find out if it's possible to redirect an actual physical asteroid by smacking into it really fast in order to then change its course if, for example, it was approaching planet Earth. Now in this case it was obviously not approaching planet Earth, this was just a binary asteroid orbiting somewhere out there, but the actual test and the results were absolutely groundbreaking. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss some of the new results and some of the new discoveries that in essence help us understand these asteroids just a little bit more, but also most importantly provide us with a very important solution to that problem that dinosaurs could not solve redirecting asteroids. But I guess first, a super quick reminder about what asteroid this was and why it was chosen instead of anything else. And so here this is a Didymus double asteroid system. It consists of an 850 meter wide primary object that kind of resembles something like this, but it's also orbited by a smaller secondary object referred to as Dimorphos. And it was that smaller object that NASA decided to collide with in order to see how the collision would then change its orbit. And that's because its orbital parameters over time have been established to extreme precision. And so if something does hit it, we'll be able to see the impact and the change in orbit pretty much almost right away. And in this video right here from John Hopkins University, that's precisely what you've seen. An extremely fast approach and a time lapse of the actual collision. And in some of the previous videos you can find in the description, we've already discussed some of the most incredible effects from this collision, but now the scientists have also discovered that apparently this entire system brightened by a factor of 8.3. And all of this was the result of a sudden ejecta released in outer space that lasted for at least 24 days. A lot of this was discovered by this little satellite known as Lucia Cube that was deployed 15 days before the collision and whose main purpose was to observe everything from relative proximity. But a lot of this ejecta plume turned out to be extremely diverse. Here are some of these images taken by the probe. Containing an unusual and somewhat complex structure that even contained filaments, mostly made out of different types of grains and different types of clustered rocks. And this was produced because the velocity of ejecta was very different anywhere from just a few meters per second to over 500 meters per second. And so basically here things were moving very differently depending on the rock and possibly depending on a lot of other factors. And though initially, in order for this mission to succeed, the orbital change for this asteroid had to be at least 73 seconds, the overall result was at least 25 times more successful. Turns out the rock's orbit at first was reduced by approximately 32 minutes, and eventually stabilized at 33 minutes and 15 seconds, with the final orbit now being 11 hours, 22 minutes, 3 seconds per orbit. In other words, the actual effect was very dramatic and much more profound than anyone expected. But intriguingly, this did not happen right away. This orbital change seemed to occur over at least several weeks, and during this time Dimorphos literally morphed into something else. As you can see in this image, it's basically a kind of a potato, or I guess more officially, an oblate spheroid, approximately 170 meters or 560 feet across. It was also relatively smooth, with possibly no craters, with its initial orbit being approximately 11 hours and 55 minutes. But at the end, it became a kind of a long-shaped watermelon, technically referred to as triaxial ellipsoid. And so basically, the entire shape of this asteroid completely changed. Moreover, it started to rock back and forth as it orbits its partner, in some sense somewhat similar to what our moon does as well, as it orbits planet Earth. And so essentially this little collision with a tiny satellite dramatically changed the entire system, causing a lot more effects than anyone expected. As a matter of fact, recent studies trying to analyze the debris that's produced suggested that all of these rocks and all of these tiny meteorites are now going to be traveling across the entire solar system and potentially even at some point collide with planet Mars. Although not anytime soon. Some of these collisions might happen within the next 15,000 years and might end up leaving tiny craters on the surface of the red planet. In this case, at least four of these boulders 
have now been officially confirmed in one of the studies you can find in the description. But more importantly, now at least five more studies came out, in this case mostly focusing on the asteroid itself and discovering the origin of this binary system, but also, more importantly, discovering that a lot of other asteroids in the solar system are practically identical. And so here, the main analysis was in the way that these asteroids can change over time, even without our interference, focusing on Dimorphos' topography and comparing it to what Didymus was like as well, which allowed several teams to discover the origin of the system and thus the origin or the eventual fate of many similar systems involving similar asteroids. And first, they basically analyzed the surface of both objects. The Morphos, which as you can see right here, features boulders of different sizes, appeared a little bit different from Didymus, which as you can see in this image, was a lot more smooth, especially at lower elevations. But at higher elevations, it did appear to have rocks as well, and even more craters than the Morphos, which was kind of a telltale sign. One part of the surface here was much younger, the other part was much much older. And this could only have maybe one explanation. Or I guess only one explanation that made sense. They're basically of the same origin. And here's the simulation of what most likely happened. This demonstrates how the spin-up of asteroid Didymus, which increased its rotational speed by just a little bit, formed a kind of a ring that eventually formed Dimorphos. Here the colors represent the slight change in velocity. So as you can see, the polar regions are not spinning as fast as the regions around the equator. And all of this also shows us that Dimorphos most likely formed in separate stages, basically inheriting most of its materials from its larger partner. And this is further reinforced by the idea that a lot of binary asteroid systems are basically formed in a very very similar way as many different studies showed previously. And so whenever we find some kind of a binary asteroid, it's most likely formed in this way. A tiny moonlet is born of the larger asteroid as the larger object spins just a little bit too fast and starts to fall apart. And this tells us so much about these rocks. First of all, they seem to have extremely weak surface characteristics, or essentially low surface strength. So they're not really kept together by a very strong force. Technically, if you were to just punch through it, everything around your fist would just fly apart and it would possibly feel like hitting some kind of a dust cloud. But this also allowed different teams to work out the potential age of both of these objects, and they're surprisingly young. The larger rock is about 12.5 million years old, and the younger rock is about 300,000 years old. So where exactly did they come from? Well, it's quite possible that there was another larger rock previously that essentially fell apart, possibly because of the collision or something else, and resulted in the production of both of these objects eventually. The actual origin story here is currently unknown, but the origin of Dimorphos is known based on these simulations. And here it's the low surface strength of Dimorphos that most likely resulted in such a tremendous success for the DART mission. And so basically here, when the spacecraft hit this rock, the extremely weak surface resulted in a phenomenon known as the thermal fatigue that gradually weakened and cracked the material all over the surface of this object due to extreme heat produced because of the collision. And this very likely broke all of the boulders on the surface of Dimorphos, dramatically changing its physical characteristics in a way that was previously thought impossible. As a matter of fact, this is very likely the first such observation ever, and in essence the discovery of this new phenomenon, thermal fatigue, or at least when it comes to asteroids. With further calculations, establishing that Didymus's bearing capacity, or essentially its ability to support different types of loads on its own surface, is about 1000 times lower than either sand or lunar soil. Or basically, if you take a mug and you put it on a surface, so you know, kind of like this, it's just going to fall through the surface completely. Once again, because these are not really rocks, as much as they're just a collection of dust held together through various electrostatic forces. And of course, just a little bit of gravity. But by knowing its surface features, we can now start predicting how various asteroids similar to this would respond to similar collisions. And that's because we know that similar asteroids like Bennu, Ryugu, Itokawa, and a lot of other rocks visited by different missions in the last few decades are all rubble pile asteroids with very similar characteristics, 
evolved in a very similar fashion. And since many of them are potentially dangerous asteroids that could one day collide with planet Earth, this in essence is great news. We can use a relatively small probe to redirect them quite effectively by producing very similar effects that would essentially turn this object into a kind of a miniature rocket engine, propelling it in a certain direction and changing its course from a collision course to something entirely different. And so yeah, take that dinosaurs. We now have a solution. Okay, maybe not to like climate change, plastic pollution, potential extinction of different species, including various insects, but we can now redirect asteroids. Anyway, on a more serious note, this is actually great news, but we're going to be learning more about this mission sometimes next year, or I guess maybe like in two years. By then, the HERA mission is going to arrive here as well, and it's going to provide us with an extremely accurate analysis by conducting a series of tests in order to discover actual physical effects. And that means we'll come back and talk more about this in several new videos in the future. Until then though, check out some of the previous discoveries in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.